Okay, so a, a type of aided inspection um, and use on clear structures, so windows, uh, is prism inspection. And so we have a prism. We do this. We really don't have a lab with it, but I've got one that you can kind of get out, you can play with and, and use and just kind of see how they work. Um, depending on whether we're able to make it over, some years we're able to go over to Duncan and they they have them where we can we can see them there too. So, but, but we do have one. Um, let's go here. So prism inspection, it's used for windows and aircraft, as you're probably mostly aware. You know, we can't see the edges of them. They're gonna be covered with some kind of a structure, typically a metal, um, either they're a plug type window where they're they're going into the side of the airplane Right, and the edges of the window extend past the opening or the hole, um, or like windshields. Um, maybe they don't go into a plug type opening, but once they're in place, you set the windows in place, and then there's metal straps or metal structure that gets bolted on the outside of them uh, to distribute that load and do load transfer. And so we can't see the hidden part. Those hidden edges of the windows also happen to be the sections or the areas that are most prone to cracking, right? The stress is in uh, where they're secured to the rest of the airframe. Uh, you have holes drilled through them. Uh, you know, you might have polycarbonate windows back in the fuselage in the, the on that area, which is a little more crack or a little more less less prone to cracking. Um, but your your flight deck windows oftentimes are, you know, contain panes of tempered glass. And so they have to be drilled, they're drilled, and then before they're tempered, you know, the holes where they might have mounting holes go through them. Um, but then once they're tempered, if as if anyone's seen a tempered glass, piece of tempered glass crack, it can, it's what your car is. It's the safety glass that you see in cars. And so when they crack, they're designed to break into tiny little bits um, that don't have big sharp, you know, they're not dagger type sharp shards of glass that can cut people. Uh, and then, you know, on the windshields, it's multiple layers with plastic between them and all that to keep them from breaking. Even if one layer cracks, the others don't. But we want to be able to inspect those those edges and those bolt holes when we do. And so we do that using a prism, uh, which is a, you know, an object. Prisms basically bend light. They, they, you take two different materials. Uh, in this case, the prism is made of acrylic. Um, and the light traveling through the window if you set the prism right against it, um, that light bends up into the prism and you can actually see the edges. It's almost like looking in, it's looking at the edges of the window from the inside out, from the center out. Um, but in order to do that, we have to get our prism, we have to get the light from to bend or to move from the surface of the glass or from the glass into the prism. And so we have to, um, we have to bond what's called bond the prism to the surface of the glass. And so we use a couplant to do that, uh, which is like a gel or a liquid that kind of fills, you know, even though the, the glass is flat and the prism is flat, fairly flat, they're not perfectly flat, right? There's always going to be little kind of bumps and microscopic imperfections in there. And so we fill that space with a medium, a, a, a gel or a liquid that basically bonds those two layers together. And you'll see, we'll also use a bonding cut. We'll use it for sound. You can do the same thing with sound. So when we do ultrasound, you'll have to use a bonding couplant for sound bonding, acoustic bonding. The most basic prism, the one you'll see here is made out of three quarter inch thick um, acrylic and it's uh, UVA type two acrylic and it, it follows a mill spec, but um, people can make their own honestly they're tough to get perfect to get these sides flat you need you need to precisely machine them uh, you can get ones for relatively inexpensive prices from you know like an aircraft spruce or something like that so for most places it just makes sense to buy them and like companies will buy them but you can see here it's uh you know there's the measurement the rough measurements and degrees and that's all based on those angles are based on when you have those two dissimilar pieces of, of material, um, that the light is gonna refract when it goes from one to the other. Let's say this is our wind, we have a window, and then we set our prism on the window.
And based on the two materials, so they're looking at glass versus acrylic, it's going to bend the light a certain amount. You know, it's just like if you have a clear water bottle, you know, you put something behind it or clear glass, or you set a pencil into water and it looks like it bends. We're doing the same thing. So the light, you know, this part of the this part of the edge, this edge of the glass might be covered. And so what's going to happen is we're going to look in here. And when that light hits this edge, it's going to bend. And so we can see to the side. Okay, that's what's going on right there. So that that interface between the two different materials is what's going to cause the light to bend. Where we can actually look into that side. Okay, it's probably going to bend even more than what I've got there. That's going to be a more pronounced. It's going to be this kind of thing. Okay. Uh, and so what that looks like when we when we put it on a a piece of glass or something like this. So here's where this is a common setup for a uh, windscreen or the front windshield of the flight deck. You've got two glass panels. Um, you can see there's a one above, one below. There's a metal strap or a piece of metal structure that's bolted to the front, and we wanna look at these um, holes. And so what you can see there is the, the way that prism is sitting on there. The hole, you can see, looking if we look at the top area of the prism you know on that face we're going to be able to see or in that face you'll be able to see an image of what's going on down in the edge of the glass over here Is that showing up real time there we go okay so you can see that projected image of the hole where the holes drilled through okay and everything will look nice and smooth and clean as long as there's no damage going on. Okay. Um, and they show, they use like an immersion oil and oil-based gel. There's some oil-based couplet. There's some that are gel-based or that use like a glycer, glycerin gel, um, which is also used for acoustic bonding. Um, but it's some kind of a clear, clear liquid or gel that's used for that, um, for that uh, optical bonding. And then if we're looking at this and we happen to have damaged areas, you know, things we'll see is typically damaged areas are going to block transmission of light through them. Okay? When you have, there, when there's an air gap, which is what a crack is inside of a, a glass or plastic piece, and there's an air gap like that, the light that's going, that's traveling through it is gonna get, um, doesn't jump that gap so well. So to speak, or when it hits that gap, the the air, the the glass to light is going to bend. It, it refracts that as well, and a portion and the light doesn't hop across from one side to the other, so to speak. And so the cracks show up as darker areas. So you can see if we're looking at these holes, if you've got one emanating out from the edge there, they show like a crack, kind of at the bottom of the hole, the bottom surface, or in view uh, BB there, the bottom one. Uh, you can see a crack that is formed all the way through top to bottom um, from hole to hole. And it creates a dark patch or a dark rectangle between the two holes. Uh, and so we have these. Um, I don't have a good window to use for them. I'm still trying to find one. I had a cockpit windshield, but it was in good shape. And I tried to crack it and it basically exploded on me. So that tempered glass, when I hit it, I was hoping to put a little chip in it. When I hit it, the entire thing just went poof and instantly spiderwebbed the whole thing. And um, so you really couldn't use it for this. So I'm still, I'm trying to get with Duncan, trying to find something, but we don't have a lab on this, but it's just something that's kind of interesting, something neat to know and neat to see. We do have a prism. If you've got like a piece of glass or, or something clear you want to use and you want to you wanna bring it in and look at it, under that, you're welcome. To, we're welcome to do that, and I'll still try to find something that we can use to uh, to kind of see that. But anyways, that pretty much wraps up prism inspection. Like I said, it's a pretty short one.